any 15 at random? Like my social security number, my office phone number, like that? Mm-hmm. Any 15 for 50 bucks. Okay. Okay. Six, five, nine, seven, six, zero, four. No fear, you're distracting me. Seven, one, three, eight. I'm dying here. Zero, one, nine, five. Limp. <laughs> uh, yeah. How much, Doc? No, I'll take it. We'll hammer the deal later. I'll be there in ten. Uh, gotta go. What's this all about? Where are you going? Business. It's ten thirty. We got business. Mm-hmm. What on earth do you do for a living? You never say. Heart surgeon. I remove hearts. Want to see? <laughs> it must be true. Because I just lost mine. <laughs> What about the 15 numbers in the $50 bet? Um, six, five, nine, seven, six, zero, four, seven, one, three, eight, zero, one, nine, <laughs> yeah. He's coming down. Got a call a few minutes ago from some guy called Doc. Doc, okay, that'd be Dr. Dirt, his garbologist. Garbologist? Yeah, guy analyzes garbage. You're doing good, Sandy. I feel like slime. Well, maybe that's because you are slime, baby. You made this deal with me, remember? Now, look, we bust this swing and kick stand. I'm gonna let you get back to that great career you got slinging skin down on Park Avenue. I don't like it. He's a nice guy. You fell for him, didn't you? I told you this guy is the king of Crisco. You're supposed to be a pro. Now, look, you stay there. He's coming out now. <laughs> this on the security floor. It's one of those special Dunhill Supremes Herman Zindel smokes. Well, if Herman's in town staying at the palace, this could be big. And Herman sure love to get his hands on you. All this other stuff comes from the presidential suite. Ah. Mm. What's, well, what, what is that? Smell it. Hmm. It has Hoppy's number nine gun cleaner on it. Use it to clean gun barrels. They got shooters on the 50th floor. Don't know how many. Oh, and look at this. Is that from Tiffany's? Receipt for a six-carat pear-shaped diamond. Near as I can tell from the trash, the guy is piling up jewelry, probably keeping it in his room safe. Give me the whole profile. Guy's name is Donald Clements. It's on that torn envelope there. The girl's name, I don't know. But from the hair products and cosmetics, I'd say she's late 40s and starting to put it on with a putty knife. He's a sugar daddy, maybe 60, with some parts failures, uh, dental cream, stomach medicine, hemorrhoidal, well, all this stuff from aisle six at the pharmacy. Now, he's a cowboy, maybe an oil man. Here's a telephone bill here with a bunch of calls to Dallas. Mm. Uh, he's in town buying his bimbo jewelry. Uh, from all the hotel security and rent cops I'd say he's keeping the ice in his room. And there is a receipt for opera tickets for tonight, so the room's probably going to be empty. So all I gotta do is get past Herman and all the rent cops. Ought to be a snap. What's the trouble, Agent? Uh, 
Dorsal? Guy in your penthouse suite, Mr. Donald Clements. You have evidence he's laundering cash for the meddling drug cartel? <laughs> That's impossible. He's a Texas oil man. He owns two banks. I've been working this file for two years. I probably don't know what I'm doing, right? I'm probably in here wasting your time because I have nothing better to do, right? Well, I didn't say that. Get with my program, Mr. LeMay. Can I count on you here? Uh, yes, I, I guess. Yes. Good deal. This bill is part of a DOJ sting operation. You'll notice the serial numbers are in the 4,000 series. The bills we used were sequential. I'm going to need access to that room. I'd like you to come along as a witness. Is Mr. Clements in the room right now? Uh, no, I believe he's at the opera this evening. Uh, may I see your security activity report, please? Security? Mr. Clements always hires additional security. I'm sure the hotel has filed an activity report, right? Come on, Mr. LeMay. I thought you were going to be good people here. Of course, of course. All right, William. I want you to bring a pass key and turn off all this taping and monitoring equipment for 15 minutes. Why? So I can get into Mr. Clement's room while he's out and see if any of these 4,000 series bills are up there. Now, if they are, I'm going to call up Justice and set up an arrest. Now, if I do that, and if you work with me, I think we can keep this out of the papers. <laughs> Thank you. We don't need this kind of publicity. All right. Let's do it. Um, I'm still not sure about this. Uh, it seems wrong. You know what's really wrong, LeMay? You know what's really poisoning our society? Drugs? I'm glad to say you're finally with the program. Finally punching my time clock. Good going. Give the combination to the safe. I'd like to take a look. Bills are probably in there if they're anywhere. VS1. Great color. Very nice. Well, what are you doing? I've developed a slight problem of logistics here, William. See, I'm not with the DEA. I lied about that. I'm with the HTA. HTA? Hotel Thieves of America, East Coast Branch. Give me your hand. <clears throat> it's not as bad as it looks, really. I'm taking some braces, but I'm going to leave this big bracelet behind for you. Arms around the pillar. Thank you. Please tell Herman that I enjoy doing business with this hotel. As always, I found the staff cooperative and about as dim as a 30-watt bulb. Uh, are you Tommy Logan, the, the guy who's been hitting our hotels all over the world? I want to thank you, William. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh. Keep the hundred. See ya. <sighs> Turn off the security system up there. Mr. LeMay, a DEA agent was here. Apparently, Mr. Clements is involved in laundering money. Ah, what nonsense. Okay, okay, we're set up. We're gonna cover the elevators, we shut down the exits. You owe me, Herman. If I hadn't been on you, need to pick you clean. I'll get my men. You guys on the exits, stay down here. The rest of you fan out through the hotel. this evening. Hi. Yeah, I left my passkey on the third floor. Would you please have security open the floor for me? <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you.
What's he doing? Is he opening a shelf of his old kid relocks his third floor? He's in the executive offices. Come on. This time, there's no way off this floor. This guy is harder to find than a virgin in Vegas. You like me? I love doing shows. I can never do it. It's in the heating system. Well, let's turn it on then. Something about the heat. It is awfully hot in here. <laughs> Anybody seen a Scottish Yorkshire Terrier? Don't hate me, Tommy. They made me do it. I can't tell you what a blow this is to my ego. Okay, Sergeant. I guess I'm going to spend a few years in graduate school. I'd say at least five pebble here. your applause. Gotta know how to do time on the main line. There's easy time and hard time. Hard time is easy. Easy time is hard. Gotta stay out of cliques, clubs, and gangs. Because once you join, they own you. Gotta know how to stay away from the sissy boys and out of the trick bunk and how to keep your eyes down even when you're looking at the sun. Gotta live without loving. Slow it all down so your heart don't go hard and your spirit don't go 
go soft. But most of all, you gotta protect your center. That's all you've got. It's really yours. Ain't a man in his joint that does it right all the time. You, Tommy, done it better than most. You're the one who taught me. Can't teach a man nothing on a main line. You going out tomorrow. Got a chance to start over. I started so young. I don't know anything else. Ain't in your blood, Tommy. Not really. It can be more. That's the best I can tell you. See you back here. Thanks, Eddie. What are you going to do, Mr. Tap? Weren't you going to give him a ride? A case in the place. Okay, the bar's got jade links worth about 20 grand. Lady in Pink's got real nice jewelry, only it's costume. But it's made by a craftsman, which means one of two things. She's either in here looking for some out-of-town bohunk with a fat wallet she can strip mine, or she's the genuine article and the real ice is in the hotel safe. That's Mrs. Hawk away. Husband died last year. She keeps the uh, real necklace, 20 carats, in the office safe. She wears a duplicate, except when she's going to uh, society functions. You're better than I expected. You know how much flack you're gonna get for hiring me? I didn't build this chain of hotels by being timid or completely honest. You know, when I was 20 years old, I had 12 middleweight fights. I was 10, 0, and 1, but I had a glass jaw. One shot right here, it was lights out. So I knew I needed to make a career change, right? I went against this uh, Mexican middleweight, Farentino Rodriguez. I love that name. His manager picked it for him, you know? but Rodriguez, he couldn't pronounce it. He used to say, Fartino. Pretty funny. But I knew he had a great uppercut, and he was going to send me to Central Receiving. So I went down heavy against myself, and then I went into the tank. I made 50 grand, and I used that to buy a half interest in my first hotel, 35 years ago. You're ruining an American success story for me here. The managers and the boogies were making all the money. We were just meat machines. So how about it? You gonna go work for me? Or are you gonna keep teeing off on my hotel guests? I haven't decided. I would like to get my hands on Mrs. Harker Wade's jewels. Keeps them in the hotel safe, you say? Yeah. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Taft? Uh, no. Give us a minute, will you? Huh. Uh, no, please, please. These are all gemstones. Oh. I've got a meeting upstairs. Um, when you're through looking at them, just put them back. <laughs> what are you kidding? What is this? trying to 
to pull here. And this guy. down even when you're looking at the sun you got a chance to start over leave it all behind it ain't in your blood Tommy not really you can be more most important you gotta protect your center that's all you've got that's really yours Mr. Logan, I'm assuming this means you've decided to accept my proposal. You are either the craziest guy I ever met, or you're the smartest. What if I popped the stone and put in some yag while I was gone? Hmm, I don't think so. With you, it's all or nothing. And what would you have told Mrs. Harker Wade if I didn't come back? I'd have said, um, sorry, honey. I guess I'll just have to buy you another. We're getting married in June. You're invited to the wedding. to the board. Stop arguing, Thomas. Who do you think you're talking to? Ten grand does it. Cash, check, money order. I don't care, but we need it by the 10th. It's a city shootout. Am I supposed to steal it? You want me to go back to prison? What do you want from me? Money. As much as you can scrape together. Get the check in the mail, sugar. No excuses. I guess that just about covers the European hotels. The Hawaii and Caribbean hotels are being dealt with as a separate accounting unit for beach and sunbelt operations because of the new airlines package. Okay. Well, that's it for this morning. Oh, before we break, I'd like to introduce to you the new special head of security for the hotel. A man who we're all more than slightly familiar with and who will now be working with us instead of against us. I'd like to present Thomas Logan. I'm looking to Mr. Logan to help us with special security and anti-crime projects in the hotels worldwide. Specifically, hotel theft, and criminal involvements. A field Mr. Logan is uniquely qualified to monitor. Tommy, you'll have a chance to meet everybody at lunch. You want to say something? Well, uh, Mr. Taft has given me a great opportunity here. Most people don't get a second chance like this. I promise to do everything I can to live up to that trust. I have a question, Mr. Taft. This is Christy Cooper. She's vice president of publicity and public relations. Go ahead, Christy. Bluntly put, I see Mr. Logan's employment 
as a public relations nightmare. Here we have a hotel that caters to the wealthiest and most influential people in the world, and the man that we've chosen to be head of special security is, in fact, a world-class cat burglar. I can't understand why you would want him here. I have my own reasons. <clears throat> I don't know why Mr. Taft offered me this job. If you want my opinion, I think it's lunacy. I can certainly tighten up security in this hotel chain so that thieves like me will have a tougher time getting past it. Is it smart for me to work here? Probably not. Is it going to be completely effective? I don't know. Is it going to be a public relations nightmare? Most likely. Well, since you're the leading skeptic, Christy, and since we don't have a VP of security, I think it makes sense for you to be in charge. Mr. Logan will report directly to you. Lady, I think you just got handed the wheel of the Exxon Valdez. Sorry if I'm causing you a problem, Miss Cooper. Are you? This hostile reaction to me, is it chemical, physical, or emotional? It's practical. I've got your police record in my briefcase. And you can carry it without help? You must be working out. Let's you and me get something straight, Logan. I don't think you're cute. I don't even find you mildly attractive. To me, you're just another wise guy with an angle. For some reason that totally mystifies me, as well as everybody else on the board, Mr. Taft has decided to play chicken with this hotel chain by hiring you. Okay, it's his company. I'll do my best to handle it. But do I want to trade sophisticated, witty remarks with you? I bet not. Right, and do I want to talk to you, sit near you, or even be in the same general time zone as you? No, again. Bingo. Now, since you're reporting to me, we're going to be forced to work with each other. I will do my best to maintain a general tone of civility, despite my enormous and overpowering dislike for what you represent. Any questions? Just one. What is it? You want to make it your place or mine? I would rather give birth to a chair. It's a start. This is Grant Dillon, CFO. I got a call from our hotel manager in Acapulco about an hour ago. We got a problem there. Get packed. I'll have a car waiting downstairs in 20 minutes. Whoa, what's the problem? What's going on? Uh, it's pretty sketchy, but apparently one of our guests, a woman, staying in the 20th floor presidential suite, went off the balcony. They don't know if it's a murder or a suicide. Mr. Taft says this is why you're with us. So you're out of here. Oh, whoa, whoa, uh, who's the woman? I uh, registered under the name of Molly Smith. That's all we know. Molly Smith. I'll meet you in the lobby. There's something else Mr. Taft would like you to handle for him. That's Melissa Taft, Mr. Taft's daughter from his second marriage. She's lost in the system, I guess is the best way to put it. Lost in the system? This is hard, but Miss Taft left school in Switzerland two weeks ago, and we think she's in our chain somewhere. Now, I've suggested you take this on. I've been sort of trying to track her through accounts receivable. She's got one of our gold cards, and she charges everything off to the hotels. Now, she's been at the palace in Cap Ferrat. Mm -hmm. I sent somebody, but she went to Nice. I sent our French president there, but she was in Madrid and so forth. Now, she used the card and got 10,000 in cash. Now, she stopped using it, and I can't track her. Anyway, if she keeps moving west, she'll be in St. Thomas or Antigua or perhaps Acapulco. The migration habits of the rich are baffling, aren't they, Grant? Tell me about it. She's only 15. I think somebody should kick this little girl's butt. <laughs> ah, but Mr. Taft feels guilty, the divorce and all. Anyway, I'd really like to get this off my desk. So since you're headed out there, maybe we can get out ahead of her and grab her. I'll check it out. Okay, and good luck with the jumper. Okay. Stay in touch. All right, see ya.
I'm Tommy Logan. I'm Connie. We'll be leaving in a few minutes, but as soon as the other passenger gets here. Other passenger? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Connie. Miss Cooper. Do you and Miss Cooper know each other? Yes. We only communicate in sign language. Sign language? Flip-offs, Italian salutes. You'll see. Mm -hmm. Hope that isn't my booking sheet. Three years in 84 never went to trial, and half the other priors were dealt away in various plea bargains. As long as we're in this together, let's have some rules. I work much better without rules. There were times, Mr. Logan, times when I have needed compassion, times when the dangers of life withered my perspective. Times when I needed not only the comfort of my friends, but the respect of my enemies. Broken Rifles, 1980, with Lee Van Cleve. Then you turned and slapped him, which is the part of that scene I just as soon avoid. Familiar with my film career? We had a Christy Cooper section in the prison video library. I've seen all of your films about a half dozen times. I wasn't a very good actress. I'm much better suited to what I'm doing now. Self-criticism is a very endearing quality. OK. Since you're going to be reporting to me, perhaps you'd like to begin by telling me what you think you're going to do once we get there. Investigating the death of this Molly Smith, finding out who she was and if she was murdered. Oh, well. See, you have the wrong slant there, Mr. Logan. Tommy. Tommy. What's wrong with my slant? People come to the Palace Hotel not to get murdered, but to have adventures in paradise, frolic with abandon. I'm sure you can. <laughs> appreciate the difference. Well, maybe murder is the wrong word. Uh, what if we use the euphemism? This woman came to the Palace Hotel and was helped across the river the final frolic with abandon, the ultimate adventure in paradise. How about that? I'm going to have to insist that until we get facts to the contrary, that you will not hint or suggest or euphemistically imply that this lady was murdered. Right now, she jumped to her death. OK? I'm supposed to be investigating it. That's why I'm on this airplane. Do it my way. Until one or both of us is fired, which I'm sure is going to be in the immediate future. I'm Tommy Logan. I just got in. You guys are expecting me? Yes. We know who you are. Emil Tassel. I'm the MOD. Miss Cooper said you should wait in your room. No, oh, she did, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, actually, I'd like to take a look at the place where that body was found. Well, it's, uh, it's over there. You don't mind showing me, do you? Listen, Emil, 
Have you seen this girl around? Mm, no, sir. She's very young. Who is she? She's a friend. Mm. Listen, if she turns up, you let me know, OK? Yes. Make a few copies of this picture. I'll drop one off on your desk. Uh-huh. The hotel obviously would prefer that this story remain uncovered. I can't keep you from releasing it, but it would mean a great deal to me personally if we could keep from blowing it up out of proportion. Miss Cooper. Oh, please, Christy. I hate formalities. We're all in this together. Christy, was the woman registered under an alias? Smith couldn't have been her real name, and there was no identification on her. We don't know that it was an alias. There are people named Smith in the world, actually quite a few, unless I miss my guess. <laughs> According to the manager, she was checked in by an unknown man. She never left her room, either. It, it was almost as if she didn't want to be seen. This is just a woman, probably very depressed, who in a moment of weakness jumped to her own death. It would mean a lot to me if we could just keep it at that until we have facts to the contrary. Now, I know most of you missed your 4 o'clock flight. I would love for you to be my guest at dinner tonight. And if anything else develops on this, I'll be in touch with you. Directly. Excuse me, please. Something we can do for you? Hi. No, I'm fine. Maybe you'd like to tell me exactly what you're doing? Well, the lady came off the balcony up there and landed down here like this with her feet over the wall. And I really didn't want an answer. Who are you? Oh, I'm Tommy Logan. Came down here with Miss Cooper. I'm sort of looking into this, uh, this, uh, what are we calling it, an early checkout? Miss Cooper said it was suicide. Do you agree? No. Please, let's finish this up. Are those hers? Yeah, I, I think so. When she came up the balcony, her legs hit here, the shoes went kapow, flew off her feet into the bushes. The cops obviously missed these, but I think they're gonna prove she was murdered. Mr. Logan, can we take some pictures? Sure. Let me ask you a question. Are those Dearborn espadrilles medium made in Madrid? Yeah, now that you mention it. Why? Because, Mr. Logan, those are the shoes the cocktail waitresses in the Lagoon Lounge wear with their uniforms. <laughs> it's hard to, to think that a guest in the penthouse would own shoes like that. They're $40 on sale at the palace shop. Maybe we could finish up inside. We had something there. You and I have yet to have an even more concrete understanding. Meet me at the bar by the pool in 40 minutes. I'll have these guys fed and watered by then. So what's the deal? You said you wanted to have an arrangement? From now on? Everything you do, you clear through me. <laughs> what makes you think I'm going to pay any attention to you? Good question. Here's the answer. I got to thinking. You were sentenced to five years for breaking and entering and theft, but you got out in three. Good behavior. Hard to believe, but that's what happened. So that means you're on parole. So I faxed a friend of mine, and I found out that a condition for your parole is this job. You need this job to stay on the streets. Uh, and I'm your boss. I mean, I could fire you, which means you're in violation of your parole and you're back in prison. And you do that to me? You put me back in jail because I'm a problem for your career? I don't want to hurt you, Tommy. I really don't. But you're a hand grenade with a pin out and you're rolling around under my feet. All you have to do is stop trying to prove this woman was murdered when we both know it was suicide. I think you dropped the zero off the price tag. These don't go for $40 a pair. They go for $400 a shoe, $800 if you want them both. The waitresses in the Laguna Lounge wear rope sandals. Described them so accurately, I fell for it. You definitely know shoes, lady. I have a situation here. I don't need you creeping around the bushes finding a dead woman's shoes, saying she was murdered while I'm trying to hose down the international press. Yeah, except that she was murdered. So get ready to deal with that when it comes down. Who says she was murdered? The FBI computer. According to the feds, 99% of all people who commit suicide take off their shoes before they jump. It's a conditioned human response. 
These were obviously her shoes. She was wearing them for the big trip down. So there's a 99% chance she was thrilled in her room and then thrown from the balcony. Thrilled? Whacked. Offed. Murdered. It's a euphemism. Maybe we'll use it in the ad brochure. Miss Cooper, you have a problem. I work for you. You want to sit on this evidence? Fine. It's a felony. It's called accessory after the fact, and it carries a seven-year jolt. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll do the time together. I'll be in my room. Let me know how you want to play it, boss. naked and jump in there with me? Yeah, just give me a minute to get my chainsaw. You decide what you want to do about those shoes? I think we should tell the police. I'm glad you feel that way, because I already did. I know I'm supposed to run everything by you, but even you wouldn't want an ex-con to commit a felony, right? It's okay. I talked to the cops. They swung by, picked up the shoes. They're gonna do a new autopsy, check her blood, see if maybe she was dead before she was pushed. It's okay. You can fume while I bubble. You still haven't told me what you're doing in the presidential suite. This room rents for fifteen hundred a day. Oh. I'm soaking up the ambiance, trying to think like the dead woman. Vibing her vibes, drinking her champagne, trying to find meaning in all of this. You forgot to mention freeloading. That too. Look, <laughs> Christy, everybody in this hotel knows a lady got dumped up here. It's a bad luck room. Nobody staying here wants it. Okay, Tommy, knock yourself out. But this room goes back on the room chart first thing in the morning. Fine. In the meantime, there are two bedrooms back there. You're welcome to the smaller one. <laughs> Come on. I scored the room. If we get busted, I will take the pop. It's a straight up no touchy deal. Okay. <laughs> Why the hell not? Oh! Hold on. I must have pulled too hard. No. No, I don't think so. Just a minute. Hold this. What is all this stuff? I'm a cat physician. That little needle nose gadget is for cat appendectomies, and the big one is for hysterectomies. These are lockpicks, burglary tools. How inappropriate. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I'm going to take this lock apart. And you're gonna hold that bag. Thanks. This lock's been tampered with. Somebody's made a forced entry into this room.
wasting your time. It's empty. I already looked. What are we going to tell the press? Two bodies off the same balcony in two days. I think we have to forget damage control, do a lot of smiling. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I noticed jewelry. It's a habit. Police Academy ring. Thank you. Your worst fear realized. I think we need to go have a drink where somebody else lands out here. Hey, listen, I got a plan. We'll go to the police station tomorrow morning and see if anyone claims the body. I'm looking for my friend, Billy Templeton. We came down here a day ago together, and he went looking for a fishing boat for tomorrow, and he, he hasn't come back. And sometimes he gets drunk and gets arrested, and I was wondering if maybe y'all had him here. You got some identification? What is it? Why do you need my identification? June Miller. I hate to tell you this, man, but uh, your friend is at the hospital. They're doing an autopsy. He's dead? Uh, where are you staying, Miss Miller? I know Sergeant Lopez would like to talk to you. I'm staying at the Hilton. Thank you, Miss Miller. We'll contact you. says the guy's name is Billy Templeton, but I think that she was lying about all of it. Yeah, how come? She was using a phony southern accent, run out of Annie, get your gun. You think I'm a bad actress? You want to see her. There's a turnoff for her hotel. I told you she was lying. I wonder where she's headed.
sorry, I didn't know it was you. I told you to stay back there. I'm the boss, you knucklehead. I give the orders, you do what I say. Got any new orders, boss? It's your call. Yeah. I'm ordering you to go ahead and do whatever it was that you were doing. Dummy. Stop sneaking up on me. I wasn't sneaking up on you. I was sneaking up on the TV. I didn't even know you were out here. I just happened to notice it was on the late show. <laughs> this is one of your worst movies. You sit around in a bikini and high heels with your lower lips stuck out talking about lifeguards and surfing gods. I thought you said I was a remarkable actress. And this you were remarkably bad. I had a Yugoslavian director. He didn't understand the material. I didn't understand the material. How'd you get into acting anyway? Not like any actors I ever met. Well, I, I was in college. I was the photo editor for the college yearbook. And some people from the Bobble Christmas tour came on campus to see if there were any girls they were going to take overseas. And I was covering it for the college yearbook. College yearbook, huh? Yeah. I would have said Rally Squad. Oh, I did that too. And Lit and Drama Club. I, I had fun in college. I bet you were homecoming queen. You're making me feel funny. Like, none of that stuff meant much. We were just kids. We had fun. Mm. So you went to photograph the Bob Hope auditions. They took one look at you and put you in it. I was the farmer's daughter who couldn't remember where she lived. It was, it was very uplifting material, but it got a laugh. I don't know. It's kind of silly. No, it's not silly. I didn't mean that. I was just thinking how much I missed, you know? My life seemed full when I was living it, but the more I see now, the less fun I think maybe I was having. Well, that's not necessarily so. You know, I have bad times. Everybody does. Mm. I mean, this movie was a bad time here. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna turn it off. No! Oh. <laughs> the big ones are running over at Honolulu Bay. It's because you and Ho-Daddy say you haven't got the stuff to ride the wild, sir. They'll see the kahuna from the bottom up, Diane. You know, from the first time I saw you, walking your board, hanging ten, shooting the curl, I knew you were special. You were the only one out there, got me putting the stick, cutting the edge, shooting the curl, riding, riding the, the waves. waves. You, you were the man I dreamed of on the wild, wild sir. sir. Please. I think it was bad enough when only one of us did it. Time to go to work.
kind of party is this? It's 2 a.m. and people are still arriving? I thought they were supposed to be asleep. You were gonna trampoline over the wall. It's kind of lit and crowded. You're gonna land to a standing ovation. I gotta get in there. Why? I mean, maybe little Annie Oakley's just a friend of whoever lives there. We don't even know who the dead woman was. We don't even know she was really murdered. Christy, she was murdered. The shoes, remember the shoes? Come on with the shoes. I mean, maybe she didn't like the way they fit and she threw them off the balcony first. And maybe they pinched, or she didn't like the color. I had a pair of Greek sandals once that killed me. I threw them in the fireplace and drank champagne while they burned. We gotta get that into Robin Leach. You know, you're just so sure all the time that you have all the answers. Why is that? Because I do. Being perfect, I see no reason to deny it. Honesty is generally a cherished human characteristic. But conceit is a lot less popular. <laughs> you are not breaking into that house. You gonna stop me, Peaches? Peaches? You proceed without portfolio, and your termination with a cause is immediate and without review. What? Corporate speak. Euphemism meaning sacked, fired, dumped out on your butt. I know who Molly Smith was. You're not gonna like it. You knew? And you didn't tell me? You know, Christy, I really like you. I mean, for a boss, you're really happening. But sometimes, and I mean this as constructive criticism, sometimes you can be a little rigid. Who was she? Valerie Evans. The movie star? Are you sure it wasn't Liz Taylor or Marge Simpson? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That was not a question. It was sarcasm. Just what makes you think it was Valerie Evans? I mean... Sergeant Lopez, he ran dental charts and fingerprints, got a perfect match. It was Valerie Evans. Cap teeth, surgical implants, satin thighs and all. I was under contract at Universal with her. She was the biggest star in the lot. Now, doesn't that make you even remotely curious what a world-renowned movie star and the owner of this heavily guarded villa might be up to? I mean, come on, Christy. This is promising stuff. Now, I got three hours till sunup, which gives me just enough time to scare up a tux so I can crash that party. <sighs> a suit for every occasion. You're the worst thing that ever happened in my career. But you gotta admit, you're having some fun. Yeah, Tommy. You're a happening playmate.
invitation, please? You want an invitation? Why? I'm collecting them for the raffle. Could win the fishing trip in the two weeks in Venice. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Caesar, Veronese, and Apache Phillips invite you to the party for Tango, David Halston, yada, 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 law. Hi, excuse me. Uh, hi. Hi. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Apache or Caesar. Do you know where they might be? Sure, sure. Caesar is the guy in the white dinner jacket, and Apache is the tramp getting it on in the pool. Some tango, huh? Huh? Tango? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you think? Oh! I think it's gonna be a great movie. If they can raise the last five million. The script is awesome. Especially the scenes between Lorraine and Desiree. Yeah, that's what I think too. Thanks. See you later. You're Cesar Verdes, the producer, as I remember. I don't believe we've met. You used to be married to Valerie Evans. Yeah, but that was, <laughs> we divorced 10 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm Lane O'Hara, O'Hara Tractors, Dearborn, Michigan. We put out the Green Ripper 8600, that's our big one. The Green Ripper? It's a wheat combine. You can harvest 180 acres a day. Corn, wheat, soybeans, any stock crop. Great little unit, 15 tons of whack and thrash and fury. <laughs> Caesar, I'm real interested in investing in your movie. I hear the script is awesome. Especially the Lorraine Desiree scenes, I can't wait to read it. You're with, uh, who are you with? David Halston. Represents my Hollywood ventures. Of course, I haven't made much yet. I caught a couple of losers in a row, but I'm not discouraged. I love the business, and I'm still learning. Hey, kid, when you read this script, you're gonna see what a special project it is. You can't miss, it's a sure thing. That's what I hear. Hey, come here, I want you to meet a very special creature. This is my pole princess, the queen of sheep. Oh, my. Caesar, where have you been hiding this fantastic godlike creature? Get in here, baby, and take me. We can exchange names later. She's very shy at first. <laughs> but once you get to know her, she comes out of her shell. This is Apache Phillips. Hi, uh, Lane O'Hara. She and I formed this production company, Mayan Arts. I love that name, Mayan Arts. It's so perfect, my darling. Are you going to come in here and get me, or am I going to have to go into the other end and mope? You can rape him later, my darling. Right now, he's mine. Go. <laughs> yeah, credit card number TC, 697-346-7991-2765. Oh, wait. Uh, excuse me, Bert. I want you to meet Lane O'Hara. Bert Danzi. Nice ring you got there. Police Academy? Yeah, I used to be a cop. No kidding, what town? What is this, 20 questions? So far, it's only two. All right, look. This is your party, Caesar. If one of these poster boys starts smarting off at me, I'm gonna bend his jawbone. Okay. <laughs> I want to show you something much more important, my friend. I found this out on the beach yesterday. This changes everything. What's wrong? You maybe jumped the gun on this one, Caesar. Isn't it better to let him out of high school before you peel him and reel him? This girl's only 15. Immaterial in this country, my friend. I hate to say it, Caesar, but you're kind of a jerk. So it's time for bed. Lights out, no talking. <laughs> Investing in your movie, you think we'd all end up getting sued for felonious indiscretion. 
But I got a new agenda for your hacienda. I want to know why Valerie Evans was murdered. You level with me here, maybe I can help you slip the grief. It has something to do with that movie project, am I right? That's why she was out here. She's an actress, you're a producer, her ex-husband. Any of this working? Security! Get in here! No, 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 we can't have that. Here we go. So, where's the safe? Just nod for yes, shake for no. Here? Over here? Over here? Oh, really? Over here? Okay, let's take a look. What have we got here, Caesar? Huh? Okay. Well, you're probably asking yourself, what is my new best friend up to? Well, this is a little fiber optic TV camera. Like the ones they use in orthoscopic surgery, operates on almost no light. Just slip it in and take a peek. There we go. And oh, what is this? Looks like the insides of my old Volvo. Okay, here we go. Follow this over, and the trigger mechanism should be about right. There. Ha <laughs> ha, voila. I'm doing pretty good, aren't I? Okay. Klinger Schloss, good box. Electronic lock, 50,000 combination possibilities. Here, all right. And run it. Lock's open, all we gotta do is jump the alarm. Just like in the manual. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Caesar, you don't pay taxes, do you? in cardiac arrest. Where's the car? There's a truck out back. Okay, thanks. They're in the safe. He's going out. Get him! I got it.
What are you, crazy lady? We do stunts like this at the movies all the time. Two, four, six, eight. Five million dollars. <laughs> Easy, boy, this is not your money. <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> but it ain't. No. But it is. Why does this keep happening? I'm not straight enough for this. Melissa, you want to go out for some food? They got great cheeseburgers with slop downstairs, American style. You want one? I promise I'll shut up, okay? ex-cops after me before. I'm an ex-con. Yeah. No, really. I used to steal stuff from his hotels. I'm a hotel thief. Did three years in Attica, and your dad hired me out of stir to help with security. Gives me hope for my dad that he hired you out of prison. He's more drawn to French diplomats and Italian actresses. That's why I'm in school in Switzerland, so that I'll, um learn six languages and maybe get lucky and seduce some nice dippy prince or something so daddy can have a little culture in the family. He didn't seem like that kind of a guy. Oh, right. You probably saw the Brooklyn Street Fighter. Yeah, he'd do that for you because he figured you'd dig it. He can also be Arturo Taft. Of the Hampton Tafts? You don't know him. Maybe no one does. So, what are you supposed to do with me now that you've captured me? You can stay here, you can take off. I never expected to find you. I just kind of going through the motions. I'll tell you one thing I won't do. I will not be your warden. I'm not cut out for that. I'm gonna change real quick, okay? We'll grab that burger, all right? I don't think so. No? No. I... It's, it's strange. I just... I feel like we know each other. That's crazy, huh? Uh, yeah. So, I can just stay here? You're not gonna call my dad? No. I think maybe you should call your dad. Not because you owe it to him, but... You owe it to yourself. You have to protect your center. No, you see, each time you hurt somebody else, it exposes your center and that devalues you. It's pretty strange material coming from a professional thief. Where'd you get that? Um, where'd I get that? Well, I got that in stir from this guy called the Tin Man. Like in The Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Except in Attica, he was the guy who hired out to kill people on the inside. 
he'd make these shivs out of tin trays he stole from the commissary, and he'd take a cigarette contract out in the guy's life. What? Cigarette contract. Price of a hit was two cartons. And he'd leave the shiv behind with the dead guy's name scratched in the handle. See, everybody knew that the tin man was going crazy. Each time he sculled a con, he just seemed to get physically smaller. It was like watching this big ball of yarn unravel. He stopped eating, and he got smaller and weaker, and he died. And my cellmate, Joe Horsekiller, told me that he had devalued his soul with each killing until there was nothing left. And Joe said the most important thing in life is to protect that center at all costs. And that's why you should call your dad. I'd like to make a credit card call to New York City. Your name, please? My name is Bert Dancy. Credit card number, please? My number is TC69734799. Two, seven, six, five. One moment, please. Yeah. Just give her the number. Excuse me, Mr. Taft. Phone call for you. Thank you, Fred. Hello. Daddy. Melly? Is that you? Where are you? I'm in Acapulco, Daddy. M Mr. Logan found me and brought me back to the hotel. Oh, God, you're safe. I've been so worried. Look, Melissa. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about not being there for you. I really am. It's OK, Daddy. No, it isn't. Come home. Please come home. I'll call you tomorrow, OK, Daddy? something I didn't tell you before. I saw some pictures of your friend Caesar with some girls that couldn't have been 13. Well, they must have been from a long time ago. I mean, I don't think he's sexually interested in anyone these days. Probably from all the drugs he does. See, he, he wanted people to think we were lovers, but he never touched me. Nobody did. In fact, I never felt he was even attracted to me at all. So Valerie Evans had these photos in her possession, and she brings them to Mexico. Why? She wants to be in Caesar's movie. Yeah, Caesar and Apache were having these huge arguments about it. See, Valerie wanted to play the part of Lorraine, but Apache said she was too old. She hadn't made a movie in 10 years. Apache said she was fat, and nobody cared. So Caesar's willing to put his fat ex-wife into the movie to keep the embarrassing Polaroids from getting out, but Apache and Bert and the missing link who broke into my room don't want her in the movie. They take matters into their own hands, and over the rail she goes. I guess that all tracks. You see, Apache wants people to think that she's this party girl, right? She's just cute, funny, sexy, and she's just there for the fun and the games. But she's the boss. Also, she has all this money to invest in things from this huge drug operation she runs. And she's violent. So she's over here laundering money. She and those two meatballs with the police academy rings figured it was easier to kill Valerie than compromise the movie deal. But they can't make the movie without Caesar's connections, and he wants her in the movie so he won't get exposed. Have you seen Christy? No. Why? I'm just worried I haven't seen her around. It would be just like her to have followed me into that party. You know, I have discovered that, in general, she does not do what I ask her to. So now what? 
These pictures are leverage. They're motive for murder. Which means they're going to want them back, so they'll be calling. Yeah? Darling. Hola. I have something of value to you, and you have something important of mine. Yeah, like what? My money, and I have your friend. Just a minute. <sighs> Say something. Hey, tell me. Tell this bitch to eat dirt and call the cops! Think about it. I'll call you later. There's nothing to think about. You return my friend unhurt. I'll give you back the pictures and the cash. Plus 10,000 in handling fees and 20 points in your movie. You really are a thief. Let's not sink to insults. Now listen to me. There's an abandoned coconut plantation 10 miles south of here. Have everybody there dressed for church at 4 o'clock this afternoon. I'll be along with the dirty pictures and the cash. Don't be late, sweetie. I'm telling you that I have a black belt in karate. My hands and feet are lethal weapons registered in the state of New York. Yeah, and I'm required to tell you I know BS when I hear it.
So what happened to the grenade? It didn't go off. G.I. Joe from the gift shop. You bought it from the gift shop? I stole it from the gift shop. We gotta put a TV monitor in there. Place is easier to hit than an L.A. pedestrian. Runs the orphanage school, Attila the nun. A nun? Mm. See these backboards? She gets stuff like this from sinners. How does she do that? Extortion. <laughs> I think we need a new arrangement. Again? You operate like everything is a hot ground ball, to play at every base. I can't work that way, especially in my current position. I thought we did pretty good. No, you did pretty good. You solved the murder. I ended up with the Palace Hotel in every headline in the world. Mr. Taft called me in. He wasn't pleased. I thought you were cozy with all those editor guys. Can't you just take them out for stingers or black Russians, whatever those donkeys drink, and smooth it over? No, I can't, and you know that. So here's the new deal. What, what? What if I kiss the end of your nose? Taft hired you because he's like you. He sees himself in you. And because I think he's a little nuts, and he can't enjoy life unless he's risking everything. And I'm just not about to risk my career with you, so I've made a few notes that I want to go over with you. Fine, boss, whatever you say. So you got new backboards. All right, who bought them? None of your business, but that's small potatoes, Art. You're not going to get off for some lousy backboards. I know, I know. This is fun. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad I came home. I, and, you know, I'm glad I got a chance to get to know you and Christy. I just, I just can't get over this feeling like I knew you before. Mm -hmm. Me too. Maybe you guys knew each other in another life. Tommy was probably stealing something out of her dresser jewelry case. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore her. She's just frustrating her natural sexual desire, and it's stressing her out. Just look at them, Liz. <laughs> Makes me feel good. And sad at the same time. Are you sure this is right, Art? I didn't even know I had a son until two years ago when you found out from the county. Then I had to wait for him to get out of jail. I never knew Sue was pregnant. She never told me. He seemed to have survived, thanks to you. But now that I know he's mine, I'm afraid I'm gonna disappoint him, just like I did his sister. I can't help being a competitor. I just don't know if I could be a good father. Okay, I'd rather have it this way for a while. Make it up to him without his knowing. Maybe you can pull it off, Art. It's gonna be tough. But you always were a tough kid. Nah. I had a glass jaw, remember? Children beautiful. And they're finally together. Mm -hmm. 